Hi, I'm John Gallo with Back to Work here at the uh, Bravo Awards for Baltimore, and I'm here with uh, Georgia Beglin from Insperity. So let me ask you this. Sure. If you had to go back to your senior year in high school, what advice would you give yourself? Oh my goodness. Not to stress over the small stuff. Such as? Such as... Am I going to get married? Am I going to find a man? Am I really? gonna, Am I going to love my job? Am I going to find something that I love to do every day? Because, you know, it works out. If you're not happy, you move on, and eventually you find something that you're going to love, and a guy you're going to marry, and it all end, it usually it's gonna works end up. out. It usually works out. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Millennials. Sure. You do HR, you know. Yep. How do you, what advice would you give them and what advice would you give towards managing them? Because one of the big knocks yep. is, is turnover. They yep. always look for the grass is greener, well, yep. generally not. Yep. What, what would be your advice and how do well, you manage we, them? Yeah, we, we're seeing a lot of millennials want to um, continue to be trained and developed. Um, to understand that they want to know where they're going. They want to know what their career check means. They want to know how they're going to get to that next step. Um, and I'll tell you that the motivators for millennials are very different than other generations. They're not all motivated by money. Um, I'm not. A lot of my colleagues are not. And um, you know, understanding and asking the questions ahead of time and understanding what motivates them leads to different opportunities for that individual. But if you don't know that, and if you go in assuming that everybody's motivated by money, they're going to get frustrated because they, they, they're not learning anything new. They're not contributing. They're not feeling like they're they're being taken seriously. Um, and they're they're gonna find a job that will. So you think mapping a career path for them from day one might be 100%. advantageous, right? With, and coupling the training, development. Yep, the whole absolutely. get it from not about the job you have now. Where do you want to be in five years? And consistent feedback. They Consist do. Yeah, they do. They love constant feedback. feedback. So the you know the annual and semi-annual reviews. Not so much. They don't work as no, well. No, they need. I mean, that that goes with. I mean, society in general, constant yep. feedback, messaging, all that. Yeah. Um. What would, what's your biggest pet peeve in the office? My biggest pet peeve. Um. Well, it's probably something I do myself. Uh, it's talking too loud. Really? <laughs> talking too loud. Yeah. I mean, when you're trying to make a phone call, like, and you, it sounds like you're in a call center, I think that's just that's my biggest pet peeve. But I'm a loud talker too, so I tend to to go to offices. Technology. What's your go-to source for news in the morning? What's the one source you go to that yeah. you trust? Says, I need to know what's going on for my day and how it impacts me. You go to yeah. what source and why? I go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn? I go to LinkedIn. Um, I track all of my Very underrated. Yeah, Very it is. underrated. I, I track news all of my prospective clients, all of my clients, um, a lot of the, the colleagues in and around uh, our field, um, a lot of business owners, CEOs, um, and they're constantly posting things that matter, that mean something to them, that are relevant. Um, so if there's something that I should know about in an in industry or in a particular company, um, usually LinkedIn is a place to find something that's relevant. What's your best app for business? Best app for business? Oh gosh. I'd say LinkedIn. LinkedIn's pretty solid. You, yeah. you got that, they got I mean, that IM feature with that, IM, with that Recruiter Plus, that Recruiter LinkedIn. Oh have, yeah, they got everything. Company profiles, they link you to other people. I have second connections with so many people. So many you people. Never know. And you can always ask friends, colleagues, if you met once to, to make a, a warm introduction for you. And it's it's hands off enough so that people don't mind doing a, a warm introduction. You know, they just send a quick note and then, you know, you're better off having a warm introduction versus trying to get into talk to a business they can owner introduce you Absolutely. oh that's a great function yeah let me ask you this what book has motivated you the most if you were to say hey ah. you need to read this book to get to be successful what book would it be um oh man that's a good one um can we come back to that one you can come back to that <laughs> okay hr field yeah a lot of a lot of there's always a lot of movement yes young millennials tend to be very politically active how do you blend or how would you what would be your advice for blending politics in the workplace especially what's going on today i say keep it neutral you talk about generics you say you know when this type of you know uh, when, when the republicans are in control you see these types of issues and the democrats are in control you see these types of issues right now this is what we're facing and these are how business owners are dealing with it and you kind of keep it neutral i has, mean you don't bring politics oh, into has it has that changed though back from maybe eight years ago when you had um, i guess more more democrats which tend to get the millennial vote well clinton definitely got the millennial vote barack obama definitely got millennial vote trump can be debated just run the numbers say is that has you seen a change at all 
Yes, I mean, it has to, it right? Has to. Um, oh, I agree. I, but, I'm just, you know, I, I agree. I, I keep as much as I can until I know the person, person yeah. well enough to mention something. Um, I can see conversations. I've seen I've conversations seen just dive, you know, and they just they just fail. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, enough work. Okay. What's, what's your what's your what's your perfect day outside the office? My perfect day outside, outside the office? Outside the office. No oh more work. God. No more work. Well, when I'm not pregnant, <laughs> I would love to be with my kids on a winery with my husband um, and my sisters and family. Family. Yes. Just awesome. at a winery, tasting and eating and having a good time. All right. Last question for you before I let you go. What specifically would you like to see out of Governor Hogan and Mayor Pugh to spur investment in Baltimore and growth? Because that definitely impacts yeah. HR. Okay, more businesses and more jobs yeah. definitely would impact you. What, what would you like to see? It tends to be a little stagnant down there right now. Yeah. Um, I would like to see some more competition and available competition with the small business owners. Um, right now, there's a lot of legislation on them. Um, that does not allow them to compete with the larger businesses. Um, there's there's a, a law in force right now where small businesses are not allowed to um, to compete uh, in, in a scale that allows them to have benefit, benefits, HR compliance. Um, where everybody's equal. So if you're a business and you're under 50 full-time employees in Maryland, you're not allowed to have better benefits at a lower cost than another company who's under 50. Very tough, very tough. To benefits state, are huge. Benefits every other are state huge. in the country you're allowed to, not in Maryland, since 2008 or 2009. And it's really something that stifles, I think, the small business community. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, Georgia, thank you very much.